All right, welcome back. We're going to jump back into more Fire in the Lake. Actually, this is the second time I try to review this, uh, start this recording. We're once again aiming for the sub 30 minute episode here, uh, mainly because I forgot to move this guy over. I got all confused and I forgot to move the U.S. ineligible. And I was like, wait a minute, did I did I screw up the order here? Because I know that the Arvin passed and that could have meant that the NBA could have gone. But actually, the NBA and the VC were ineligible. I just forgot to move them over and shuffle all these things over. I didn't do my I was a little sloppy on the upkeep there. Okay, quick quick look at what's going on, on the board. NBA is in good position to start doing things, I think, next round. They've got some nice troop cubes out. Uh, they will get some more resources thanks to uh, the coup round that's about to come up. We also, the Arvin really did do a whole lot this round, honestly. They did a little bit, did a little bit of patronage. It wasn't like a ton. And they had a bunch of their money spent by the good old USA. So, you know, yay. Um... The U.S. actually had some good moves, knocking out the VC in a lot of places, but they took a lot of casualties. It's going to be really interesting to see how that plays out in the coup round. And the VC kind of built up in places, did get knocked out of Tain in. That was, that was pretty devastating. But, yeah, I think they're doing okay, honestly. I think they're going to bounce back pretty well. Uh, doing moderately good on resources, too. I think they're going to have to do another tax round uh, again. But, hey, that's, that's how life is. That's how life is with the VC. So let's go back to our optimal percentages, which is 47.5. For this screen bomb okay so we're on a monsoon as you may remember let's take a look at our card here a monsoon it's a coup card is next we have no sweeps no marches or pivotal events and airlifts and airstrike can attack max two spaces so no march or sweeps or pivotal events we have to worry about pivotal events but marches and sweeps could be important uh who's up first the nba all right so they have joe and lie here Unshaded resources. Any NBA resources minus ten. Yuck. Uh, NBA must remove a die roll of troops. Terrible. Uh, NBA add plus ten resources, and the VC adds the trail value in resources. Ooh, ooh, that's kind of nice. Because who goes second here? It would be the VC or the Arvin would go second here if we took this event. And honestly, plus 10 resources would be massively helpful right now because we're not going to get a ton of money from a really high trail value. And giving a little boost to the VC is always nice, but like, what would I do if I was the NBA? I still don't have like a ton of money to spend. I might try to move troops in somewhere. I probably would just want to bombard again. Wouldn't be that helpful to bombard except to reduce aid because I wouldn't be able to get to another level of three cubes removed. I mean, I could bombard here and play coup. I could obviously bombard again and tain in. Ah, the 10 resources is too good to pass up. I think the NBA really needs that boost. They got hit really hard last round and couldn't do a lot because of the inability to have money. And uh, since this is a monsoon anyway and the Arvin won't be able to sweep or march, um, I think that's a great idea. So yeah, they're going to do that. So... They're going to go all the way up to 16. Massive. The trail value is 1, so the VC goes up to 1 there. Yeah, trail value and resources. Okay. Arvin is up. They can do an op and a special. They probably want to do another govern action because, honestly, they really would like to do that. They could do an assault or they could do like a... Oh, they can't sweep. No sweeping or marching. So, hmm, can't move these guys. They could patrol, but they only move cubes with that, and they'd really like to rather move these these their special forces, and they can't. Uh, so we'll probably do a train. We've already got everything out, so this actually would be like a totally like null op. <laughs> we could pacify maybe somewhere, a place. Let's see. Uh, in one train space, replace three Arvin cubes with a base. We could do that. Um, we already have a base here. I don't think that's really helpful. And nowhere else has like three cubes that we, we could put a base in Huey or something. I don't know if that's that useful actually. Uh, and then if desired, replace three at or for the Arvin troops, police and have coin control, we can pacify one or two levels. That could be helpful for us. We need troops and police. We could do that like in a city. I mean, we're about to do that anyway with our, um, the coup round coming up but honestly that could be like really good and, and what we could do is actually pacify something and then govern in it to knock it right back down which is actually a great probably idea so let's go ahead and do that so let's train we're going to nominally train in a city but not actually put any pieces down instead we're just going to use this sweet sweet uh pacify action so it's going to cost us three resources oh yeah i could have just done that okay so we'll pay three and then what we'll do is we'll govern and we can do that in one or two. Let's take a look at it again. Oh, wait, we have this street. 
One or two coin controlled spaces with support and not Saigon selected for and not selected for training. Oh, that's right. So we can't boost it and then govern in it. Oh yeah, that's that's kind of a hitch there, isn't it? That's okay. That's okay. Because we're about to have the the round, we can actually do this fairly safely. So I think what we'll do is go ahead and do this again in Wags. That's our two value city, and we're just gonna keep doing that. Can't pick on lock. Let's go ahead and pick Kanto, because it's got a bunch of those nice good stuff. Okay, we'll pay three for the train. Down to seven. And what we'll do is we'll pay three to move this up to active support. So we can govern there later, hopefully. And then we'll do the govern action. We're going to move this all to patronage. So if you remember, we take this down to um, one level to neutral. We're going to add one to our patronage there for that city. Boom. And then we have our special ability, so one in one governed place, we don't have to shift. We're going to do that way, and we're going to get two more to our patronage. So that's actually really hot. All right, so you can see we're inching closer, inching closer. We really want to keep building that patronage up because it's not so easy as the Arvin to control everything with coin control. All right, so we did that event. So basically, they would take the op and special. Uh, everybody's going to become eligible now that we're doing the coup round. So let's go ahead and just do the coup round. Let's do it. We'll take old Joe and Lai. We'll get discarded and draw a card. Okay, so Arvin gets to go first next round. That's really interesting. Okay, this will become the new leader. We don't need to worry about that right now because that's just going to be the new effect. It will open up um, the play, uh, possible play of uh, pivotal events. We'll need to talk about that maybe, maybe in this video, maybe the next video when it becomes more relevant. Maybe we'll do it in this video. I didn't really look that up, but yeah, maybe we'll take a little time to do that. Okay, it is coup card time. Coup card time. All right, so victory. Is anybody a victory? Nope. Oh, yeah, we also have our sweet cheat sheet. We didn't have a, a failed attempt desertion. We haven't come across that yet. That's one of the like possible coup cards you can get as a desertion card. Has not happened yet. All right, resources, sabotage, LOCs with more insurgents than coin pieces or adjacent to a non-coin controlled city. I think all the cities are coin controlled. So this wouldn't count because there's just equal amount of good guys and bad guys, or I don't know if we want to use those kind of, yeah, I mean, let's just say it, good guys, bad guys, right? Uh, insurgents and non-insurgents. How about that? Let's be, let's be cool like that. Okay. We do have an insurgent on this one. We do have an insurgent on this one. We do have an insurgent on this one. And this one is equal. Is that the only place we have them? Yes. Yes. Okay. So these are going to become sabotaged. Listen all y'all to sabotage. All right. So we're going to do that. Boom. We did it. Okay. Sabotage. Sorry if those like noises are really loud. Okay. Okay. We're going to degrade the trail by one box. If Lost or Cambodia is coin controlled, it is not. Then we're going to add resources as follow. The Arvin gets total econ is 15 minus the econ of sabotage locks. So we did get rid of one, two, three values. So they're going to get 12 resources plus the current aids. So they're going to get uh, 26 plus 12. So that's what? 38 resources. 38 plus 7 is 45. That's hot. The NBA is going to get the number of their bases in Laos and Cambodia plus two times the trail value. The trail value is one, so they get two, one, two, three, four, five, six. They're going to get eight resources total. This is actually seen. Now it's really great that we took that because we're just going to have so many resources. So we're going to go up to 24 here. The BC gets their number of bases. And they have seven, so they're going to get seven resources. They're actually like sitting in the money too. Now we subtract, this is where the casualties are going to come in effect. Subtract three times the number of casualties from aid. So we had six, that's 18. So that's going to leave us with eight aid. Ooh, that's not awesome. That's not great for the next round. We're going to need to try to boost that or else the Arvin is going to start becoming really starved for resources. Okay. So we've done the resources. Now we're going to do support. U.S. and then Arvin may pacify a combined total of four resources. They need to have coin control, police, and their own troops. Okay, and oh, wait. You know what I forgot? We need to pay an extra resource because we did pacify this. Ooh, that was a good catch for me. Ooh, so what are they? They actually paid one resource to be there. Okay. We're still going to have to pay four because... Oh, actually, I wonder. That is a good question. I wonder if the new leader takes an effect because that would make that cheaper... 
That is a great question. I don't think I've ever had that really come up too much. I don't think I've ever had these two leaders get put together. Is reset. Hmm. I don't think I see anything that says that. Hmm. I don't think I see any. Wait. Wait. As I say, I said. Never combine more than one coup round in a row without at least one event card. Sure. Instead, additional coup cards are played, including the new RVM leader and any immediate effect without a coup round. So it sounds like it maybe does have an immediate effect, which I think kind of makes sense because it's a it's a coup. <laughs> it's like it's a coup, dude. Like they just knocked over the leader. That's why we're doing this new kind of like thought process. So yeah, we'll do that. Okay, so now Arvin gets to pick up to four spaces where they have coin control, troops, and police to uh, pacify. Do they want to do that? They probably want to do that in a couple of cities, honestly, so they again can do the governance thing. Like Kanto is like place they're going to want to do that. So we will pacify there two levels. Let's do it. So that's one, two. That's going to cost six resources. So now they're down to 38. No, don't take that down. Yeah, there we go. They're down to 38. So that's one space. They'll probably do it in all. Oh, they're definitely going to do it in Contum. So that's two space. That's another six resources. Where is it? Oh yeah, there is another 32. Um, is there anywhere else they wanted? They've already done it in Saigon. They got Kanto locked up. I guess we're just gonna go ahead and do it in Kanra and Quinon. So let's adjust it to support, and that's gonna cost another six because it's two levels. So that's our four spaces for them. We spend a ton of their money though. I don't know if that was like the smartest. So what do we spend six? And now we're at 26. Is that right? One, two, three. Yeah, that's right. I can add. I can subtract. Okay, so they did that. Let's see what we've got here. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, now the US may do that. Does the US want to do that anywhere? They have troops, police, and coin control. They do have it here. They have troops, police, and yeah, they have one of their own troops. I guess bombarding could have kept them from doing this if I would have done that with the uh, NBA. I did not think about that. That's the only space I think they can do it because they already have Saigon locked up and they don't have their troops plus police plus coin control. They, I guess they'd have it here. They could do it in Da Nang. That's probably smart because they want to boost as much support as possible. So yeah, they're going to do it in Play Coup. They're going to adjust this to support two levels. So that's going to cost six resources. Yeah, dude, Arvin is going to be broke. Um, but you can see we're getting really close here. We're getting real close for them. I think that's all we're gonna do. I don't. I would love to do this in Denang, but honestly, like, I don't want to keep spending a ton of the Arvin resources. I think that's just we don't want to get them too broke. So they definitely need it. The VC may agitate in a four spaces where they have with any VC and no coin control. So any VC, no coin control. This is already perfect. This is not. They may do that here. That's already good. That's coin control. That's coin control. These are full. These are not, so we could pick four spaces. So we'll go ahead and pay one resource per thing we do. Yeah, we're gonna do that. So adjust that to opposition, that's one resource. We actually have to pay two here because we gotta get rid of the terror marker. So that's three resources to boost this up. Total we've spent so far. So three resources total. They're already full. This is already full. This is full and that's full. This is the only other place we can do it. So we're gonna spend three, five resources because we're gonna boost this up too. That's five resources. They're going to go to nine. But look at this. They're also getting pretty close. So we're starting to see some, some action on the board here with the, with the various factions. Okay. I think that's all the support phase. Yep. Now we redeploy. Remove all U.S. Arvin pieces from Laos and Cambodia. Don't have to worry about that. Arvin must move its troops from locks and provinces without U.S. Arvin bases and then may move other troops to cities. Okay, and then may move police to any locks or coins within South Vietnam. So it must move its troops from locks and provinces without bases. I don't think it has any troops, actually. I mean, here one, but there's a U.S. base, so it doesn't have to move it. There's no troops here, so actually they have none of that. So we could redeploy the police, but honestly, I kind of like where a lot of the police are at. We already kind of did that last turn, and we didn't have to do a whole lot. So I'm actually really happy with a lot of the distribution of, of cubes. You know, honestly, maybe we want to get a guy in Contum, but where am I going to pull a guy from? Maybe Camera. 
Yeah, let's just do that. Let's pull a guy in the game from camera. And let's pull a guy from unlock. Because I'm less worried about the VC getting in there and like subverting them away because it's got support. They'd have to like march in and they'd be active anyway. So yeah, I think we'll do that. We'll put two in there, although there is a one guy, so I'd really like to put one more. Okay, we'll take one out of Huey. <sighs> no, we can't, because then we can't govern there, because there's three guys and we need to we need to surplus that. Ooh boy, that's rough. Um oh wait, we got extras here. We'll just take one out of old Saigon. Perfect. Okay, perfect. We'll do that. I probably should be throwing some guys on these roads because that's really annoying, but like, ugh, I just don't have a ton of extra cubes to be thrown around right now because only police can move, right? Yeah, to any locks or coins. Yeah, only police can do that. Troops can only move to cities, so we're not going to do that. Okay, the NVA may move any troops from any spaces to any NVA bases. Do I want to move troops around? Actually, I kind of like where a lot of my troops are at. I'm not so certain I want to, like, invade the south here <laughs> because of the overwhelming U.S. presence down here. But I do like the fact that I have more troops up here. So what I'll probably do is take one troops cube. I'll just move it because I only need three down there. And let's go ahead and just give it to southern Laos. Let's just do that. Uh, then we adjust all control. I think that's automatically does it. We don't have to worry about it. And then we have the game end. We do not have the game end. So now we go to commitment. Um, it, Oh, we don't have to worry about that. Okay, because we're not doing the non-player. One in three U.S. troop and all base casualties are out of play. Okay. So one out of three go away. Then the U.S. places U.S. troop casualties into, uh, places others into any coin. Oh, wait. Oh, wow. Irregulars and casualties to available. So we don't have any irregular casualties. We're going to remove one out of three to out of play. Then the U.S. places other U.S. troop casualties into any coin control, locks, or Saigon. And then we can decide if we want to move more guys in or not. And we have 14 available total. Oh boy. Oh boy. So I think what we're going to do is take two of these, go out of play. So we get four more troops to throw around. Honestly, I'm going to throw one in Hue to keep them from governing there for free for two. That's going to be a really backbreaker if I don't fix that soon. And let's put the other three... I am worried a little bit about up here what's going on. I got a ton of guys down here. I'm not too worried. I think we're going to go back into the, the highlands. So let's just take those guys and, and move them there. That's all getting all jingle jangle now. Do some like slight rearranging. Okay. Reset. If the trail's at zero, improve it to one. It's already at one, so we're good. If it's at four, we don't worry about that. Remove terror and sabotage. All guerrillas, special forces underground, discard momentum, and all factions eligible. All right, so I think we just hit the reset button on that. In faction play. Hit the reset button. Oh, done. Cool. We did it. We did that. All right, go back here. So let's take a look at this card. <laughs> I guess I could get rid of the other guy, but... It's really fun stacking them, I guess. The Young Turks. All right, so each Arvin governs special activity adds plus two patronage. Ooh, ooh. See, that's really good, actually. That's super good. We're going to be able to build patronage very quickly with the, the Young Turks in play. That's going to be not great for the U.S. They're going to have to focus on knocking patronage down and maybe the VC, too. Uh, this is going to be an interesting round. It's going to be an interesting round. All right, let's draw a card. Oh, okay, so we got Amphibious Landing, and then we have the uh, infamous Melee card. All right, uh, let's see. Arvin gets to go first. Unshaded Event, Sea Power. U.S. or Arvin relocates any of its troops along coastal spaces. Among coastal spaces, okay. And then free sweeps and assaults in one coastal space. Any of its troops along the coastal space. So just these spaces. I could, re I could move all these guys and then free sweep and assault. I don't have a ton of guys on the coast, honestly. Not super helpful. Unshaded event or shaded event. VC relocate up to three pieces from any coastal spaces. They, don't, they do have a couple. And the U.S. and Arvin remain ineligible through the next card. Okay, that's terrible. Honestly, though, we could do where we want because the U.S. is next. So that's actually pretty okay. So I think we can do the op and special here and then kind of be like, sorry, U.S., you're, you're not going to take the event probably and you're not going to want, you're going to do a limb op because you're not going to pass to so let the other factions do their thing. <laughs> Why would you? Okay, so this is another one of those things where we're probably going to take the opportunity to keep building. Oh, we can't keep building patronage because of 
Oh, the way. We're going to have to patrol. We need to patrol to get some cubes into Huey to over to be more than the, the government, so the U.S. there. So let's see how how what can we move with patrol? Just cost resources total. That's hot. Move any Arvin cubes to or along adjacent locks or cities. Stop any surgeons. Then at each lock, activate a gorilla. Sure. Um. So yeah. Stopping at insurgents two or along adjacent locks or cities stopping us so we can move all around as long as we don't hit an insurgent and then at each lock we can activate one gorilla for each arvin cube there and a desired free assault on one lock that's actually pretty helpful i think we will do that and do we have an open pathway i guess contum could take some oh no because there's this guy and there's this guy so these roads are blocked here it's gonna have to come from one of these places i think to get to there or i can move them out of denang which seems very risky or I could take this. No, see, they blocked that road. They blocked that road. I can't get into Hawaii. Oh, no. What am I going to do? I want to govern so bad. And I don't have troops. I guess I could train in there and then remove cubes. That's one thing I could do. But I can only train in a city or U.S. Arvin base. I guess it is a city. Okay, that's what we're going to do. That seems like a huge waste. I'd rather patrol almost. But, like, ugh, I could just patrol and get rid of some of these guys. That could be a good move. Uh, they really blocked me. Oh no, no, I could take this guy and patrol up. But then that all of that do all that would do is like free up Denang, and then I'd have to do it again to get up here. Oh man, We're, they, they've nicely blocked off the routes here. That's kind of annoying. I think what we'll do is we'll train there in a good old way. So we'll pay three resources. We're only gonna do it in one space. And then we're going to govern again. We're just going to keep on governing. So we'll govern in a way because I eventually will have more cubes there. And ugh, that's this is nasty. I need to actually think about that at some point. Um, let's govern in Canto. So I almost like want to knock down the support here because oh yeah, I could have brought more troops in or out. I didn't say anything about that. I don't really want to bring any troops in or out right now. I think I've got a lot of cubes on the board. I want to see if I can press a little harder this round and then start pulling things out next round. I think that's going to be the the path to victory. I'm going to feel really sad if a coup card comes up really quickly, though, because we could have easily, like, surpassed this and probably been doing great. Um, but I'm a little afraid that the NBA is going to start marching around and doing stuff, and they're annoying. So let's go ahead and take, like... Oh, yeah, I'd kind of like to start spreading coin control over here. Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't that be nice? Let's take a, let's take a police out of Saigon, and let's bring it up here. Away. Oh, there was two there, huh? Ooh. Was there two there? There was two there. Nah, we'll just take the one. Let's 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 not be super greedy. Um, so now we have more than that. That costs us three resources. I believe I just did that. If I didn't, I'll go back and fix it later. You're probably screaming, no, take the resources, take the resources. Um, so we'll govern now as a special activity. Again, we can do it in a space where we have more cubes than US. We do, oh wait, yes, we have five, they have four. That's why I did that. We'll move two to patronage here. And actually, because we did the govern, uh-oh. Each govern special activity adds plus two patronage. So we're gonna get four patronage here. All right, two plus two, and then we're going to get an extra one here. This is going to go towards neutral, and we get one more patronage. No, silly Billy, you don't get to, you don't get to move up. He does. Oh man, we're getting really close to getting to victory here. So I think the U.S. is going to have to really focus on um, reining in the Arvin here. I think that's going to be a big problem, big big problem for them. Oh, wow, that does put them very close. Okay, so they did that. We're going to end the faction play. The U.S. is going to get a limited op or event. I think the U.S. is going to use this to do their own train. <laughs> they probably want to do so much more than that. Um, but here's here's the reason why we would do that. If it's Saigon, we can move to three patronage to Arvin resources. If we pay one coin controlled train space, we have to pay three resources. Where Arvin's placed? Well, we're not placing Arvin. That's actually pretty hot. Pay to pacify, or if it's Saigon, move three patronage to Arvin resources. Okay, so they would love to do things, but I think what we're going to do is start, we have to really crack down. So we'll just do our limited op in Saigon. We'll train. We won't place any pieces. It's going to cost us zero, but we are going to move 
three patronage to resources. I think that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to go one, two, three, and then they're going to get, this kind of helps us and maybe helps them a little too, but it helps us a lot because they were getting like very close to winning. Okay, so they're going to go to ineligible. All right, so Amphibious Landing is gone. Draw a card. All right. This is probably gonna be very good for the VC. Okay, unshaded event. Um, two available US troops, two out of play. Two available US troops out of play. Oh, so move probably move things out of play. Oh, no, no, no. This is actually just for Arvin. This is like a minute for the Arvin. Two available US troops go to out of play, so it makes it harder for the US to win and they get more patronage. Probably is really good for them. Shaded, set a province with U.S. troops to active opposition. The B.C. place a base and guerrilla there. An aid minus six. Oh, yeah, we're going to do that. We're definitely taking that event. That is real, real hot. So set a province with U.S. troops to active opposition. The B.C. place a base and guerrilla. An aid minus six. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What has been in a, a province that is not... Yeah, we're going to do it here in play two. That's, like, too good. That's really too good. We get a guerrilla and a base and minus eight. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So we're doing that. We'll get a base here. We'll get a gorilla. This goes all the way to full. See, that was like three levels there. That's that's incredible. And because that had US troops. And then we take the eight minus six. So, man, the eight is hurting. Eight is hurting. And then we're going to have the NVA has an op, may add special activity. Okay, so what does the NVA want to do? They actually have some options now. They actually have money. We're probably going to end it after this card. So let's see what they could do. Now that we actually have money to do to play around with. First off, we could do like a march. And then we could bombard, we could ambush. That's pretty great. Honestly, that could be a really good one. Reposition things and start like taken out guys that could be really good because one or two spaces where you have an NVA gorilla who is marched or is about to attack is underground and if they're in that province they can remove it but if they're on a lock they can target an adjacent piece which is the real key point here because we have this here we have a guy here so we have a lot of like in position gorillas and we could do one or two spaces where it's marched or is about to attack is underground oh who marched so we have to actually have to take advantage of that or who's about to attack is underground. And if they attack... Eh. Okay, so I guess that's a little less great, but I don't really care. This is actually going to be totally fine for me. I think we're going to march. We're going to march, march, march. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to... Oh, yeah. What do we want to do? We could come into Bend In here and just start taking it over. That would be hot. I think we are going to do that because it's really hard to fight troops in the mountains. So this is actually a great time to like start marching in and wrecking havoc. We could do that. We could also start rallying and putting more troops on the board. And that wouldn't be a terrible idea either. We would need to do what? An infiltrate for that? Place NBA troops up to trail. And we kind of want to improve the trail. Mm, we might be rallying here. We might be rallying and then we can bombard, couldn't we? Yeah. Or we could infiltrate and put more troops on... I kind of want to rally and bombard. Kind of want to do that. And let's start racking up some more, some more pieces going. Let's rally there because we actually have the money to do so now. Let's rally here. And then you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna start rallying in the Fishhook and Cambodia. I want to start getting more of bases out, honestly, in these areas. So it's gonna cost four, and then we're gonna bombard. All right, this is great. So let's do and do the bombard first. So we're here, we still can't target that space. We are here, we can target play coup, we will do that. And we can do this because there is a base here and there's also a lot of ton of cubes. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna return that to the casualties, see ya. They're gonna bombard, take out one of these guys, see ya. All right, we already got two casualties in the box, that is nice. We can add, I believe, bases plus trail value. If an NBA base uh, grill is up to trail value plus bases and then we can improve it. So we're gonna spend Four resources, and we're going to improve the trail. So it's six resources total. That's going to take us to 18. We can add three gorillas here. Boom. We can add three gorillas here. Oh, I need three. Sorry. Oops. Boom. And then we can add one to each place here.
and then we're going to improve the trail to two. Okay, I like that, because now we're going to have a ton of gorillas. We can actually start maybe marching next turn. This will be great, because we can actually march some gorillas down into the into the Cambodia and maybe send one over here from the fish hook to start making bases. I think that's that's a hot move. And then we can start moving troops out, or we could infiltrate, or whatever. we got lots of good stuff now. we got lots and lots and lots of good stuff. So we're going to end the faction play there. Okay, so when we, we're probably going to stop the video here. I'm going to move these guys over. That's hot. All right, Eli gets discarded. That was actually like super good for us. When we come back, it'll be Mac V. Uh, either US or Arvin. Uh, either US, then Arvin, or NBA, then VC. Okay. Uh, each executes one free special activity that they stay eligible. That's actually really hot. That's really, really, really hot. So we'll come back and see how the Arvin maybe wants to use that because staying eligible is great because they're first on the next card. That seems like a no brainer. Uh, all right, so thanks for watching this video. The war is heating up, and when we come back, more fire in the lake action.